Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II a Legacy of the Void and a Patreon cast for the week of May the 15th, 2022. Let's put that in there. Top right of Hardwire, we have Rainer, and on the bottom left, we've got Clem. These two players are 18 years old. They are very, very excellent. Rainer is a world champion. Clem has aspirations to become a world champion, and these two players know each other very, very well. So this is going to be an excellent TVT from Katowice 2022. Again, this is a Patreon cast. For those of you who support me at patreon.com slash falconpaladin for at least $1 a month, I do appreciate your support, which means you get to watch this cast a month before anybody else. And if you're watching this on YouTube in the month of June, happy June, happy summer. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe. I'm here five times a week with StarCraft II content. I just bit my tongue while I was saying that. Opened up real wide and went... Oh. Okay, it wasn't that hard. Anyway. Reaper expand timing here from Clem. Overlord checking... Well, actually, kind of checking for proxies. I mean, I guess... Yeah, this one is too... Boy! If you did not watch the Rogue vs. Ryung cast that I did from Katowice, the playoffs... I mean, depending on when you're watching this, it was either last week or like a month ago. But if you look for Ryung vs. Rogue... On the channel, it is an amazing game. It is absolutely fantastic. So, so you missed that one. The thumbnail I made for it wasn't super hot, but I was also trying not to spoil, so it's difficult to balance that sometimes. Anyway, recommended. If you like ZVT, that was a good one. So we're not Reaper opening, dude. Clem. Clem doesn't believe in Reapers. I mean, it works for him because look, Rainer is going to be making some lings. Which he doesn't need. That's the trick here, right? If it's not a Reaper expand, then all you have to do is make these drones instead of Zerglings. And your economy is that much better. The economy of Zerg snowballs like crazy. And making two extra drones here instead of four Lings is hugely advantageous. But you don't know. Like, you expect a Reaper's coming, so you make the Lings. And, I mean, I've said this before, but if Terrans just kind of stop doing Reapers altogether... Then Zergs would stop making the links because you would just never expect it. But the way it is, I like it. You mix it in every once in a while, and you say, "Okay, uh, I'm just not going to bother making a Reaper." And the Zerg player's going to make links that are utterly useless because you can't pressure with four Zerglings. They're here for defense only, and there's just nothing to defend against. So third base on the way here from Raynor, about 2:30 as per usual. Clem's natural base is finishing up here too. Marine production, got ourselves a factory with Hellion production and a starport coming in as well. Okay, so what are the players doing? Well, droning up <laughs> is Arena really hard. Is he in... Yeah, he's completely in the dark here. He has no idea if there's a second base up. He doesn't know if this is a battle cruiser rush. He doesn't know if this is like a one base, two, one, one style play. And he has exactly four Zerglings as army right now. So this is risky from him. I mean, it's not a two, one, one, one base play, which would be just devastating for Rainer and would probably kill him here. He's taking the risk. Taking the risks. Terra the Overlord comes in and says, mm hmm, yes. Yes, of course. Factory, barracks, two gas, a bunch of marines, and a starport, and a medevac. He catches the glimpse of the medevac coming, and let's go. Clem's like, ah, uh, the overlord saw us. Go, go, go. So then eight lings are produced in response here from Rainer. Uh, queens, zerglings against unupgraded marines with a single medevac supporting. Gonna be fine. Rainer really shouldn't take much damage from this at all. Additionally, spores are coming in. I mean, that's just... Yeah, I mean, do you want to unload? Nah, Clem thinks about it. On this map, you can unload on this little in-between space, which means the Lings can't attack them, but the Queens can. But the Marines can't really kill anything of substance when they're sitting here either, so it's like... Mm. If there was a third base here, putting the Marines here would be super annoying, but there's not, so... Clem not doing it. Probably there's going to be the side of a fourth base, though. Hellion's trying to do stuff. Hellion not quite sure where he is. Is there an armory? 
No. Supply Depot, Barracks. All right, all right. Marines pushing up. I mean, this is a pickup and run. Yeah. And then a juke into the main. I love that. Unload, hurry. Oh, never mind. Pick up again. <laughs> Clem's trying to find damage. He's trying to distract so the Liberator can get stuff done, but um, that did not happen at all. Liberator dead, zero kills. Hellions trying to keep themselves alive, which... Oh, we have an armory. No. I mean, I don't know. If you're going to turn these guys into Hellbats, by all means, keep them alive. But otherwise, maybe dive in there and kill some drones? Medivac just getting snapped away. Creep spread pushing out to the fourth base being taken. Third CC is non-exist. Oh, here it is. In the wall. I always This is the last place I look for it. I'm dumb. Should be really looking for that more often. Overlords are like, aha, the Hellions are over here. Alert, alert, warning, warning. And the army comes to deal with it. By that, I mean it's three queens. Here to deal with it. We three queens of Orient are. Fourth base from Rainer coming up here. The Marines. No. I mean, this is... This is how ZVT works, man. It is the Terran trying to poke and prod and find ways to slow down the Terran macro machine that exists and is really terrifying if you don't try to slow it down. And just not finding any damage at all. None. Seven lings have died. No drones have gone down. I mean, maybe forcing a cancel on this fourth base, but also definitely not. Oh, come and pick him up. Ah, that guy gets killed because the medevac didn't have enough health to pick him up. Brutal. Double medevac's moving out. Clem's third base has landed. It is in orbital. Mule gets called down. There it is. Hellions attacking left. Maybe Medivac's attacking right. Gonna meet up with their buddies here. The Queens, do they see this? No. They're distracted by these Hellions. And then, surprise! <laughs> Shy of surprise. The Queens get killed. One of the Medivacs dies. That's probably a fair trade, I would say, for Raynor. Lings are trying to get that wrap around so the Baylings can crash and doesn't work. Are we trying to move in? Yeah, so this drop stuff by Clem's great. Okay, so now the Hellions are YOLO. The Hellions are coming in. They're trying to kill as many drones as they can. They're going to get a nice barbecue here, though. Oh, yeah, that's not bad at all. A pretty good split on the other hand. Only three drones died. Are you kidding me? That's insane. This group is forced to pick up an unload over here. Not happy about that either. <sighs> Raynor. Raynor is playing very, very well in this match exceptionally well in this match. His creep spread is fantastic up the middle on the right side. Never mind the Germans are dying. That's harder. Not as impressive anymore. I mean, it's still impressive. It's not his fault that that happened, but whatever. Wings, <laughs> Bane's... That's the sound of getting picked up by a medevac is... It's true. Look it up. Let's see. Another base timing. Probably. Yeah. Clem's just... I don't know. He's been really aggressive. He's only lost four Marines so far. He's done an amazing job of picking up. Target firing them Banes and then doesn't lose a single Marine. So he's babysitting his units as well as he needs to to win this game. It's just the Hiders are out now from Rainer in eight minutes. And so that's really tough to deal with when you're Manavac. An Overlord is going to die because the Overlords don't have speed yet. And Orza being researched. But there's a Hive coming in from Rainer too. And picks up, target fires down, a Baneling gets out of there. I mean, this is... Queen transfuse. Oh, no! Full medevac! So it was four Marines, now it's 12. <laughs> the Marine taking care is not going as well for Clem. Is he losing steam? He's trying to target those Banes. Lost a couple Marines on the ground there. Rainer is just a monster. Lurker Den on the way. Rainer's at 190 supply. It's 155 here for Clem right now. Creep spread is pushed so far, but getting pushed back by Clem. We need the ghosts. Where's the ghost tech here, Clem? There's going to be lurkers out soon. Ghosts are a pretty good answer to them. And where's your widow mines? I need a professional Terran to explain to me why sometimes they refuse to make Widow Mines versus Zerg. Like, why? Why? They're cheap. They always pay for themselves for the most part. They're really good against this Ling Bane Hydra stuff. It's a super hassle for the Zerg to split against Widow Mines. 
And yet, I see it over and over again. Professional Zert or Terran's just not bothering with them at all. Just not interested. Yeah, so the first 10 minutes of this game has gone pretty much as well as it could be expected for Raynor in this match. He's killing it. He's defending exceptionally well. He hasn't lost hardly any drones at all. Three in the first 10 minutes. He hasn't come close to losing a base, really. And everywhere Clem tries to sneak, ugh, Medivac with some dudes in it dies, right? Everywhere he tries to sneak, no, Raynor. He's expanding everywhere. Raynor hasn't been able to put any kind of consistent pressure on him yet. Which is nice. Like, you don't want to deal with that at all. But at the same time, if you're not getting any damage done, you... Oh, gosh. You get the feeling that it's coming. That the coming Zerg wave is imminent. And there's your Ghost Academy. All right. So at least Clem's going for ghosts. At least he's not just sticking on Marine Marauder Siege Tank Medevac here with no Widow Mines, mind you. 3-3's three, on the way for the infantry. The Zerg's working on adaptive talons, got plus three ground carapace coming in, which is just the upgrade you want when you're going Ling, Bane, Hydro, Lurker. Because it applies to all of the units that you're using. Oh yeah, Siege Tank hitting some of those Banes, that's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. 196 to 181 supply, Clem. I mean, he's on four bases, but look at how much of the minimap is blue. He's making 16 Banelings at once. Which is a pretty powerful thing to do, in my experience. Creep spread. Whoop. I mean, this group is toast. So they're going to unload. The creep spread is here into the third base. It's overwhelming these supply depots. Trying to get up another round. No, that's not happening. Although these right side tumors are coming up quite nicely. Once again, we're just chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing. And Raynor has not gone for an attack yet. He's defended his own creep spread. But he has not ventured off creep yet in any capacity. Actually, going for enhanced shockwave. Maybe for the vipers? Yeah, there's a couple vipers out. Oh, okay. We're sacrificing lings to make this happen. Okay, fair enough. Roxic knocked down an additional attack path has arrived. I mean, expanding here. He's got 9,000 minerals and 2,000 gas. Dude, Clem, no. Clem, no. <laughs> okay, so this really feels like it's going to be... I mean, not even really a lot of micro-required attack here, right? Well, he's... All right, so he pulls back. The EMP's caught lings, I think. He's microing. What I would do here is A, move everything, burrow the lurkers right here and just take my chances. But he's pulling back. He doesn't want to take any tank splash onto his banelings. He's leaving the lurkers in a safe location, relatively safe location, and knock this wall down a little bit. So the banelings are more cost efficient. That's why he is a world champion, and I am not. That said, he's losing his lurkers after getting, I don't know if we're getting enough value for this, actually. But this bank difference is startling. Oh, look, Rainer's expanding here and here. Hasn't expanded here yet, which I find questionable. And Clem's like, I can't get stuck on defense. I can't get stuck worrying about the incoming Zerg tsunami. So I gotta go for an attack. Attack! Kill some creep tumors. Kill a bunch of lings. A million banelings arrived. Run! Okay, so that pulled the banelings back, Clem. Able to expand here, too. Expanding bottom right, which I don't think is going to happen. His army's not in a position to save that, so yeah. Pick up, get out, lose an SCV. That's fine. I'm surprised we haven't seen Lurkers burrow back here behind this mineral line. That's something we see quite a bit. And trying... <laughs> trying to find somewhere... That's because of an abduct, right? Nope. That medevac is alive because nothing here can shoot up. Nothing can shoot up. Did he just scan? Was, did a lurker make it all the way back here? What? It's a lurker made it all the way back there. Here comes the swarm. Just kidding. Rainer's backing out. Trying to do what he can here. No. All right. Fair enough. Ah, did the lurker harass down this way? So that's nice. Killing overseers is a good thing, too. I just, Rainer's got Oprah money. He's at 10,000 minerals and 4,000 gas in the bank, and he's got control of way more than half of the map. 
I mean, clones have been more cost efficient. Surprisingly few casualties. Nobody's at 10,000 resources lost yet. At 15 minutes in a TVZ, which is extremely odd. But it just goes to show how careful Clem's been with his units in Raynor 2. Raynor's not been willing to just lose an entire army to the, Ter er, to the Terran machine, which he probably should be, and then just remax. but... Yeah, coming in, Siege Tank's dead, Siege Tank's sieging up. Blinding Cloud says, no, you don't have any tanks at all, actually. Sorry about that, this planetary is toast, Adrenal's done. And this is Raynor doing the Zerg wave thing, killing a base, killing a base there. Lurker's continuing to harass this third, but not really making a ton of leeway into taking it down. So sniped a base and then pulled back. Rainer's being more careful than I've maybe ever seen him in a ZVT. Like, he's not interested in overcommitting right now, which, you know what? That's fine. I mean, I'm not... I think he's got enough money, he doesn't have to be this careful with it, but he respects Clem. He's worried that he might just lose his entire army and then a huge counterattack shows up before he can really remax on what he needs. And then he dies. Like, lurkers aren't instantaneous. You gotta make the hydras first and then morph them into lurkers, which is, you know, it doesn't take forever, but it's not a huge amount of time investment either. Or time invested either. High sec auto trucking on the way. Raider goes for the third base, but again, sure, it's nice to kill this. There's a couple tanks here and some SCVs, but it's largely mined out. Okay, abducting tanks is fantastic, so he does kill what he can, gets both of the refineries, kills another tank, the snipe on the lurkers is very good as they retreat. Creeps continuing to push. <laughs> but Raider, 10,000 minerals. Just, you know, make 10 more, why are we making 10 more overlords? Oh, somehow he was down to 166 available supply, that's weird. All right, just finding a couple individual lurkers to kill. Not too bad. Night double Nidus inside the main. Uh, there's only a couple ghosts here to deal with this and a siege tank. So I don't need this is happening. It's a lot of ghosts from Clem, actually. It is 24 ghosts. Which... Uh, they're good against lurkers and stuff, but if it's Ling, Bane, Hydra, that many ghosts are not actually... It's not a good thing to have that many ghosts. So I wonder if we're going to stop seeing Lurkers and just more move into the Zergling, Baneling, and Hydra stuff. Because that's what Mass Ghost really struggles against. Nukes? Oh, we get nukes? Are you kidding, Clem? We have not seen nukes on the channel for some time. I love you. Thank you so much for supporting the channel with nukes. So the people shall be happy. I mean, this is fine. <laughs> I'm gonna take down another planetary. And by that I mean, he should have taken down another, pl oh, he missed. Dude, look, I have been approaching this game from the angle that there's no way that Clem wins it. But I don't know. It's kind he's sniping Banelings, why not? 26,000 resources lost for Rainer, 17 for Clem. Nuke, come on, give us a nuke. Let the nuke land. Like, where's the dot? Where's the dot? Where's the dot? He sees the dot. Okay, so that's good. The nuke's gonna land anyways. Woohoo! Almost takes down this hatchery. 200 HP on that thing. Like, drop, you know, maybe a couple medevacs worth of marauders here and wipe that thing out. Seems like a pretty low risk proposition, if you ask me. Yeah, this is... This is not Raynor's... It feels dumb to say that as Raynor comes cruising on in. Fungal on the ghost! Oh, no. The fungal on the ghost. And it's just Link Bane. And the ghosts are like, crap. This is not what we were designed for at all. Pull back to the planetaries. Let the siege tanks kill those Banelings. Beautiful. Nice positioning there. Allowing that to happen. All right. Clem does not have a bank to speak of, but Rainer no longer has Oprah money. He's at 7,000. I'm. This base could be killed. I'm just saying. This base could absolutely be murderized.
I like that Rainer hasn't even bothered taking the best bean geysers up here in the top left base. He's like, I'll need that gas later, probably. He's got 8,000 gas in the bank. He has more gas than minerals right now, which is not normal for a late game Zerg in a ZVT. So, man, hit that like button if you're enjoying this match. This is... I don't know. It's got a lot better for Clem than I thought it would. Again, I keep saying that after a huge swarm attack shows up and murders all the things. By that, I mean a base and some SCVs, right? Right. Oh, this is not happening. Cloaked ghosts are trying to save the day, and cloaked ghosts are pretty good against smaller numbers of wings. Yeah, all right. All right, all right. All right. And then you land the base again. Oh, we're just walking through, though. We're walking here. Lurkers burrow and take down a planetary that's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Ghosts running because there's a bunch of overseers here, and suddenly Clem's really on the back foot. If the Zergs keep swarming into this position where all the production is, uh, this might just be your GG. Ghosts are getting pulled from the right side, trying to snipe these lurkers out. But Lings keep pouring in, and as we keep saying, ghosts aren't necessarily the answer for that, and that's your GG. Rainer does come out on top there in 21 minutes in about 0, zero seconds. So fantastic play there from Rainer. Clem trying to find that damage early. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. And then, yeah, losing five drones and zero hatcheries over the course of 20 minutes and a ZBT. It's rare a professional Zerg is going to lose a game that looks like that. It's just rare, especially if you kill 46 SCVs of your own and kill a planetary and force a cancel and a couple other bases. And it's just, brr, it's rough. It is a rough game to play. If you're a Terran and you don't get any damage done, any damage done at all over the course of the game to the economy of the Zerg. You just, it's hard. It's really hard. And again, no Widow Mines, which somebody tweet at Clem and be like, why not make Widow Mines at all? Like, I'm not saying you have to make a hundred of them, but maybe, you know, ten? Mix them up. Like, make Rainer think there aren't any Widow Mines and then... Do Widow Mines? <laughs> Maybe make him think you're not making any, and then 10 minutes later, surprise, a bunch of Banelings die to a couple Widow Mines, and you're like, oh, where did those guys come from? Like, I understand your production's going for other stuff, right? You're using your factory for siege tanks, right? For the most part. Anyway, I get it. I get why not, but I just feel like... Your, your, your win rate goes up, man. Your win rate goes up if you use the Widow Mines. Okay, cool. So that is going to be it for me today. This has been Valka Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.